Welcome back, everybody. Uh, nice to be with you again. I wish I was in the class with you personally. Today we are going to uh, cover how to uh, put our house project and finish this project up and put our house into an environment. Um, lots of things to consider. I'm sure through this process you've learned to gain a little bit of an understanding of how things project forward in space and how things project back into space in relationship to our horizon. Well, today we're going to go get put some natural elements into it and put this into a natural environment. <clears throat> Where do we start? Let's think about our foreground, which is obviously our ground level where everything is sitting. So we've got shrubs to consider. We've got walkways to consider. We've got grasses and things that we will indicate. We're not going to go ahead and try to put every little element, every leaf on the tree into the uh, picture. We're just going to go ahead and stick with primarily contour line that will uh, help us just kind of put this into an environment and finish our drawing. I'd like to start here on the ground plane and work our way forward, and then we will go ahead and put some things and work our way into the background. Uh, where am I going to start here? Let's see here. I've, let's think about some, some shrubs here. We can plant, do some landscaping around the house. I'm going to start right back here and put a little tuck around this little corner here. I'm going to tuck a shrub back into the background. We're not going to draw leaves. We're just going to put little indications, contour lines. Let's put a shrub down in this area. They are clumps. Shrubs are not a bunch of little leaves. They are clumps, foliage clumps that we see. They are irregular in their shape. Think about them receding a little bit forward into the space and then back as well. Maybe there's going to be a little bit of a clump back here in the background. So they're made up of different little clumps, foliage clumps. Let me think about a walkway perhaps or a driveway coming up to this little garage here. I've drawn this little and it doesn't have to be a solid line. You can kind of break it. That gives a little bit of an indication. Maybe it disappears behind that bush and comes out again. Now think about this little walkway. It's still parallel with the side of the house. So we're going to be kind of thinking about where our vanishing points are in relationship to our building as well. So uh, keep that in mind as we're working along. I'm going to put some maybe little indication of some grasses here. Just kind of break it up and give us a feeling of some texture here and some grass area. How about a little walkway up to the uh, stair, the entrance stairs? Think about again, we're working on a flat plane. We don't want things to look like they're facing us. We got to kind of think of this horizontal placement of these. So let's, suppose we're going to put some little flagstone pavers. You're going to want to kind of work horizontally as you place those. So it feels like they're laying flat on the surface. These little flagstone pavers are generally kind of irregular shapes. So you don't have to make them perfectly round or square. And then as we come out into the foreground, maybe space them out a little bit. And just kind of let them disappear into a vignette, an indication. I'm going to put one more back here at the foot of the stairs. Okay, so now you can see that we're projecting out into our space and coming forward with our elements. How about if I put a little bush over here in this corner of this thing? Now, of course, we're seeing right through this bush at this point. I will come back in. And since I'm working in ink, I'm going to have to use some paint to kind of make some things disappear but I'll work my way up to that when I get done with putting all these elements in. Maybe that's all I want. How about some perhaps across the front of this little porch? Keep in mind the irregular contour shape of these bushes. If you go and find some photo references and look at them, you'll see that they're 
not little round lollipops, but rather kind of irregular shaped clumps of foliage masses. What other little landscape elements can we think of? How about some boulders? I always kind of like big boulders out in the landscape. They can kind of be a nice little element. I'll place a boulder out here. Maybe another little one in front. Rocks are organic shaped and kind of angular a little bit. We want to make them look a little differentiate them from the natural foliage that we see, the little shrubs that we've planted. Maybe I'll put another one over here. A little bit larger boulder. Again, kind of make that bottom area bulge down just a little bit so it feels like it's coming out in the space towards you. Maybe there's a little area and some other little irregularities to the boulder. Some grasses maybe. Okay, so we've got some little plantings around here. It's beginning to feel like an environment. Uh, what about some trees? Um, being a native California, I always love my palm trees. So you know, let's see, let's put a little palm tree over here. First thing you're gonna start with, trees grow naturally from the ground, obviously, and grow towards the sky. As they go skyward, they taper, they get narrower as they go higher. So let's see, we'll take, take and just get ourselves a long, tall, Washingtonian palm tree trunk. Palm trees are kind of like, you know, you ever seen feather dusters? They kind of flare out in both directions. Palm trees are very much like that. So I like to kind of think about how they create a little flare. It will come around the front of the tree. We're not always just looking at the sides. Go across the top and as it goes off this direction, it starts flaring out the other way. You know, another thing, so we don't want to make it just look like a little firework that's just exploded. Palm trees have fronds that come out towards us as well. So we're going to kind of indicate some of those fronds that are sticking out towards us to make it look like it's fully rounded. Of course, we've got some little dead palm fronds that hang down here that would create called the skirt of the palm tree. So yeah, they're okay. Now we've got some vertical elements going into our landscape. I'm going to put another little one back in the distance just for the fun of it. So it's not a lonely palm tree out there all by itself. Now I'm working with a Sharpie, so I'm going to have to come back in and do some little touch-up afterwards, but I wanted it to be dark enough so you could see what I'm doing here. Let's see, let's put another tree. Let's put a deciduous tree that's gonna be a lot larger. Let me uh, step over here. Again, the tree, the trunk will go from the ground up and taper as it goes skyward. Let's start with a little root, anchoring that into the ground and maybe off into a branch that <clears throat> goes off that direction. Let's come down here. Can I get my cameraman to zoom in just a little bit? Notice how in the ground, it is a little thicker at the ground and it tapers as it grows towards the sky. And I've got these branches that are sectioning off of there. Let me continue with that branch here and define that maybe. The main trunk is still going up, still tapering as it climbs higher. Maybe another branch there. Okay, so now I've got the basic trunk shape here. Let me go ahead and finish these roots and get it anchored into the ground.
<clears throat> okay, let's think about the foliage mass again. The foliage is an irregular shape similar to our bushes and shrubs that we put in here. So I want to keep pretty, put a pretty good canopy on this tree. So I'm going to go ahead and again, it's going to have an irregular contour shape. You see little breaks, little negative spaces in the background. And it's going right off the page there. So I'm going to go ahead and continue this. So now I've created a basic contour of this foliage mass. Now, similar to the palm trees, we want these, like we've got the palms sticking out towards us. We've got masses that are different bundles of uh, foliage masses. So we're going to go maybe indicate some different clumps, if you will. Sometimes we see through trees. This is what we call a sky holes. Maybe you see a little indication of a branch up there sticking through. You'll see a little negative space in the background. Let's put another little sky hole up here. And one more, maybe. All these systems of branches support these little clumps of foliage masses that we see in trees. So again, since we're just working in contour line, we want to keep it simple. We're not going to try to indicate leaves on there. It's just a mass of different uh, foliage clumps here. I'm going to go ahead and since I've got this big clump over here, I'm going to put another little branch in there to support that clump. Okay, so now we're beginning to get a feel for some uh, some landscaping going on. Keep in mind where your horizon line is. So everything below your horizon line is below your eye level and you're looking up at everything else. So kind of think about that projection forward. I'm going to go ahead and put another indication of a tree back here. Does it feel like something in the backyard as well? So we're now we're beginning to develop our environment. Perhaps we're going to put just a little indication of where our horizon is out there. That would continue over here. So now we're kind of thinking, we're looking back towards our horizon. What about a backdrop? Let's go ahead and uh, think about maybe just put in some mountains, some majestic hills or mountains into the background. So I'm going to go back behind my palm tree Continue this ridge line. Again, ridge lines are a little bit irregular. Maybe one of them extends down and disappears again behind that tree. So now we've got this defined this ridge line in the back. We don't want it to look like a cut out flat mountain, right? So Perhaps let's extend another ridge line that comes down here behind that tree, a little valley back there. When you look at mountains off in the distance, you tend to see differenti differentiation in the uh, foliage in the distance. Uh, that can help us kind of define slopes, the direction of the hill slope coming down that direction. Maybe we've got another little indication coming down this direction. Maybe with this hill sloping down this direction over here. These little indications just kind of trick the eye and give us a sense that, that there's some sort of shrubbery and things growing on the hills off into the distance so they don't just look like little flat cut out shapes in the background.
Can I get the uh, cameraman to zoom in a little bit? As you can see, I think I'm going to put another little clump out, another little foliage mass to my tree in the background here. Okay, it's beginning to come alive here and in this background. What about the ground plane itself? Do we want to add something to that? Again, similar to where we see these little differentiations on these distant mountains, we tend to see little patterns happen on the ground planes and grasses. So we can kind of use this to draw our eye forward into the picture plane and just create these little shapes. But again, you want to make them feel like they're coming forward. And snaking along the side and coming from the distance right at our horizon. That horizon line helps you define where the ground plane ends and the mountains project forward or up and in, vertically into the background. Let's go ahead and put some little indications back here. Extending off into the background. Moving around here just a little bit. Again, try to make these feel like they're extending forward into the picture plane. Let me go ahead and add some other little random sprigs of grass here and there just to kind of give us a little more feeling of maybe this is a lawn area over here. Um, you know, we can put in some little bits of texture, perhaps. Little random dots here and there. They kind of make us feel like it's a little bit of a texture rather than just a flat, perfect little plane there. Okay, what about this little area over here? It's looking a little bit flat and undefined here. I need to go ahead and indicate something coming down that hillside, that slope, the inclined plane of that hill in the background. I think we're getting pretty close to all that we really need in this image. Maybe a few more little clumps. Make this tree feel like it's not so flat there. Perhaps another little foliage mass here. This is looking a little bit boring up here. Let me go ahead and add some action. What else? What about the sky? Let's put some... Uh, God, it's springtime, you guys. Have you been enjoying all these massive cumulus we have floating around? Clouds are always a wonderful little element to put in. Let's put in some nice cumulus clouds floating in the background. Again, they're really kind of irregular shaped, big masses of moisture, warm air that has floated up into the atmosphere and created these be beautiful puffy clouds. They tend to be flat along the bottom, across the bottoms of these clouds. Some of them may be down below the ridge line, billowing up behind the mountains in the distance. Now, similar to our trees and such, they aren't just these flat outline shapes. They have these masses as they build and billow towards the sky. I think that may do it here. There's just a little wisp of those getting blown off in the tops. Give us a feel of the wind blowing those. Okay, 
A couple last little things I wanted to talk about that I didn't get a chance to talk when we were working on the houses themselves or perhaps some little uh, details on the surface of the house as well. Let me switch to a smaller pen. Uh, we do indications. We don't, similar like we don't put leaves on the trees. If we want to have siding, see, horizontal siding on this building, we're going to put little indications here and there. Your eye kind of fills in the blank areas. What about shingles on a roof? Same kind of thing applies. This is what we call alliteration. The shingles, of course, lay on that plane and they run parallel with the ridge line. And then the shingles themselves lay down on the plane of the roof. Let's go ahead and find some other little areas where we can indicate some shingles here and there that our eye again will tend to fill in all the blank areas in between. You just need a little indication. It just gives a feeling there's shingles on the roof. here. Shingles are generally staggered, so you don't have them laying down in perfect rows. They're a little bit offset from each other. I've got a bit of a leg up on you guys because I spent the first 10 years of my young adult life building houses. So I kind of got an idea of how these little systems work. So as you've gone ahead and populated this uh, scene with bushes and stuff, of course, you're going to see the you're going to have drawn over the top of your house drawing. So you, since you're in graphite, will be able to go back in and erase those. I am going to use... some paint to cover up the ink marks so I can kind of erase these lines essentially basically put those plantings in front of the building rather than making them look like we're transparent and looking through them That about does everything here. I'm feeling good about it. Now our house isn't this lonely little structure sitting out on a blank page. We put our house and our little building into an environment and uh, it's a very inviting little environment if I do say so myself. Come on, a little more touch up here. I hope through this whole process that you've kind of grasped the idea of spatial dynamics. This is what all, what two-point perspective, and I've talked to you since the beginning of the course, that the main things to really understand about learning to draw and transpose some, a three-dimensional object onto a two-dimensional surface is understanding perspective, spatial dynamics, 
and mass, which you achieve through a chiaroscuro and our light logic, which we've spent a couple of meetings on and exploring. So that looks pretty good. I think this is about all you really need for uh, the completion of this particular project. I wish that I was working with you personally in the class. I'm sorry that we uh, have to go through this videotaping and uh, virtual education that we're faced with during this crisis. But I, I hope that this will help you kind of understand how to put and think spatially again. Think about that ground plane. Think about it projecting forward towards you. These lines are all essentially going back to our vanishing points. Never lose point track of where your vanishing points are and how that relates to your ground plane and your background and such. So I'm going to uh, say good night, uh, goodbye to you now. Uh, we're going to switch on to, and uh, we, if you have any questions, I'll be available in the chat window or we can talk online here for any uh, further questions. Uh, we will be photographing this image once you've completed your landscape and I've sent some uh, in instructions on how to photograph your work and send those to me through email on Canvas. So anyway, I hope everybody is safe and uh, I uh, will continue later. Thank you.